call your best friend. There's horror movies playing that won't ever end. Drinking hard, no hipster trend. Drinking hard, our liver's right at the end. We'll keep drinking, we'll keep filming, we'll keep drinking. Nothing's gonna stop. Oh man, I had a pretty wicked dream last night. Really? Yeah. I had this awful nightmare. Really? What was your dream? Well, it was pretty wicked. We were running around the city. We were kind of reenacting like this 80s, 90s sitcom kind of deal. Um, we were like heroes. It was, it was wicked. But that was my dream. Really? Hello and welcome back to season number five, our brand new season of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Leprechaun Lager. <laughs> nice. Today we're going to bring to you part five for season five of Friday the 13th. This movie gets crapped on a lot. We thought we kind of defend it. It's directed by Danny Steinman and he hasn't done much at all. But he has done kind of a cult classic, which we have mentioned in the past, Savage Streets, starring Linda Blair. <laughs> it stars John Shepard. Miguel Nunez is in this, and he is famously in Return of the Living Dead as Spider. <laughs> it also stars Mark Venturini, and he was also in Return of the Living Dead. He plays Suicide. Hey, fuck you, ball buster! What do you think this is, man? You think it's a fucking costume? <laughs> it's a way of life! <laughs> The movie starts off, we see a young Tommy Jarvis. It's raining out, it's nighttime, and he's staring at the grave of Jason Voorhees. These two sort of poor bastards come along to dig it up. Why? I don't know, they actually. They robbed the grave because Jason was buried with lots of riches? Yeah, all this gold and everything. And all of a sudden, bling! One of the guys gets killed instantly. Jason comes out of the grave and notices Tommy Jarvis and starts walking towards him. Old Tommy Jarvis now wakes up in a cold sweat. He's just fucked up and he's been on all kinds of medication and he's been in and out of homes his whole life. Tommy gets dropped off at this halfway house and right away we start getting introduced to the colorful cast of characters here. Of course, it's a <laughs> yeah. slasher film. Even the guy dropping him off, he like opens the door and he's like, all right, Tommy, Time to get out. Tommy doesn't get out. He's like, well, stay there. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Some asshole. Ethel comes over with her sort of half-wit son. A couple of your goddamn kids have been walking around doing things on my property. There's another character who's kind of awkward, and he stutters, and he's kind of known as Stutterer Jake. Your typical goth chick, Violet. <laughs> There's the cook, and there's Reggie the Reckless. He's the cook's grandson. Why you'd bring your grandson to a mental institution <laughs> for the summer beats me. Well, it's pretty exciting, I think, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Joey, the sort of overweight kid, he kind of comes out. He's got this chocolate bar. It's all over his face. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can do the laundry all grabs and all these clean clothes with his dirty hands. Victor, scram, get out of here. I don't want your chocolate bar. Well, I'll just leave it here for you. He leaves it on the lawn. <laughs> well, fine. If that's the way you feel, and Victor all chops him in the back with, the, with that double-headed axe. And the paramedics come. They open the sheet up in front, in front of, of everyone. everybody. <laughs> come on, Roy. Time to get your hands dirty. Yeah. Then shows a bunch of greasers. Their car is having some problems in the highway. Come on, man. You gotta fix the fucking car, man. You gotta fucking go. You gotta kick your fucking ass, man. They get murdered violently by someone we don't know. Hot looking girl getting ready for her date, lame ass fucking <laughs> shitty boyfriend. This bald ass prick gets murdered too while he's waiting for her. Lana! Come on, Lana! What the fuck is she doing? 
right to the back of his lame, bald-ass head. <laughs> the cops are like, what the hell's going on? All these murders happening in this small country-type community. And, mm -hmm. of course, well, it's got to be Jason Voorhees. They tell this to the mayor, and the mayor's like, what well, fucking bullshit? It's not Jason Voorhees. He's long dead. Tommy Jarvis keeps having all these visions and nightmares and he sees Jason Voorhees all the time. He's also usually around whenever these murders, murders are take happening, place. right? It is a bit of a who done it movie at this point. Is it Tommy Jarvis because mm -hmm. he's having these visions or, you know, there's Ethel and her asshole halfwit <laughs> boy who are mad at all the kids at the halfway house? Who is it? Yeah. Or is it Jason Voorhees? Some of the kids at the halfway house start getting killed off. And then Jason bursts through the door. Typical Jason style. Yep. It shatters. It just explodes. <laughs> he walks in. He's standing there. He finally sees Jason full on. He's like, ah, it, it was is Jason. It is him. And that's where we're going to leave off the film. If you haven't, for some reason, watched part five of Friday the 13th, I'm sure you have if you're a fan <laughs> yeah. of the series. The characters are just so colorful and entertaining. All of them. <laughs> Not just the main characters that live at the halfway house, which are very colorful, they each have their little nuance, but then all the other characters, the just bit characters who get killed off like that. That's right. They're super memorable too. And they're more memorable than who's supposed to be the main character of this movie, Which right? is Tommy Jarvis, <laughs> yeah. who's kind of the lamest character, yeah. really. He's, he's kind of, for everything that he goes through in the movie, He's kind of the least interesting, actually. Yeah. It's like yeah. all this stuff happens to him and he has visions, but it's like, eh, you kind of don't care, really. Right. You look at some of those bit characters, like there's some of my favorite ones, like the lame-ass boyfriend, that bald-ass prick with the mustache, <laughs> yeah. doing cocaine, and Lana! Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's super memorable because he's funny, and he, <laughs> right. he has all these funny lines and stuff. Forecast calls for flurries, up you know. Yes. <laughs> He all gets the axe right in the head, right in the bald spot. <laughs> Demon, yeah, uh, Reggie the Reckless's brother, played by Miguel Nunez, who's a super memorable character. Right. He's got all those great lines, offering everyone all that food all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, egg rolls and pizza yeah. and those enchiladas. Oh, it must have been the enchiladas. <laughs> That's right. So he's got to run to the outhouse, and then they all start singing to each other. Like, who does that? <laughs> Who's? I don't think I've ever once been sitting on the can taking a shit. <laughs> and start singing to the person who's on the other side of the door. Hey, baby. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. <laughs> what if you're, you know, you start making all these noises? <laughs> and <shit>. Hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 baby. <laughs> Ooh, baby. <laughs> And then when he gets killed, it's super believable because, yeah. man, the fear in his eyes is great. He looks legitimately terrified for his life. The continuity in this movie, coming from the fourth one, is really good. Mm -hmm. Not only young Corey Feldman making a cameo as Tommy Jarvis to kind of legitimize the yeah. sequel, then you have Tommy Jarvis as an we don't even know, really know how old he is. You just know he's older. He looks kind of too old. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. But he's older and it's believable. Yeah, this guy would have some sort of mental disorder, PTSD from what he went through. Following him in that state of mind is a perfect way to continue the series. Exactly. He's been on all these drugs and everything, right? Yeah. To kind of keep his stability. Maybe that's what's making yeah. him go nuts too, right? Maybe not exactly what he's experienced but the treatments that yeah. are fucking him all up he's all ripped mm -hmm. he's a strong unstable quiet badass you know he takes a guy like suplexes him yeah. into the, the table and he beats the shit out of that <laughs> that hillbilly guy <laughs> all his karate yeah. when he does it plays into the fact that oh well he is strong enough and crazy enough to be committing these murders, mm -hmm. right? So He's capable. Is, it, is it Jason Voorhees or is it Tommy Jarvis? It plays perfectly into the kind of whodunit, passing the torch almost part yep. of this movie. As far as we know, Jason is dead and gone. The characters almost bring him back to life. Yeah, right. with his memory. Yeah. Oh, it must be Jason Voorhees. And that's why a lot of people shit on this movie, and I think undeservedly so, is because, oh, it doesn't count. It's not Jason Voorhees in the movie, it's somebody else. Well, so what? It's still a Friday the 13th movie. Yeah. Like, it still follows the entire formula yeah. to a T. If you were disappointed at the end, when there's a reveal that it's not Jason Voorhees, 
Well, then you didn't get all the clues, like the clue in, in the movie cover. It's not the mask. It's not the Jason Voorhees mask. That's right. And then when Jason finally busts through, it's not the mask. It's a different it's a mask. It's a little different. Yep. So there are little hints to kind of like warn you, this isn't Jason Voorhees. So to be disappointed by it, eh, you shouldn't be. Because <laughs> it was still a fun movie anyway. Exactly. It kind of mirrors Halloween 3 in that sense too, right? Yeah. Where they tried something different, go in a different direction. And what they wanted to do is actually start to spin off sequels of this one, yeah. which would have been cool. But of course, he's not in it, so you gotta bring him back for the next yeah, one. Yeah. And it just ruins the credibility of, of a movie like this. This movie did a, a few smart things, right? Because at the end of fourth one, they tease you that Tommy Jarvis is gonna be the next killer. Tommy Jarvis is old, he's nuts. They tease you, it's Tommy Jarvis is the killer in this movie. He's not. They fooled you again. Then at the end of this movie, he goes crazy again. <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah. like, okay, the next movie, it's definitely now for sure. It's going to be Tommy Jarvis yeah. in the next one, right? They, they could have went in so many cool directions, yeah. but of course, they just had to cop out and bring Jason yeah. back to life again. It foreshadows Jason lives quite a bit because it starts off the same way Jason lives starts off with the digging of the grave and Jason coming yeah. back to life. And it's Tommy Jarvis in the sixth one that digs him up. Yeah. Which is kind of neat how it's, they bridge that gap. And it's there. Tommy Jarvis watching them dig him up in this movie. Yes. So it's very cool. Yeah. Time to get your hands dirty. Yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. what does that mean? It's <laughs> a lot of cool foreshadowing in this movie that a lot of people probably don't get because it's just a... A uh, slasher. Still very enjoyable. Yep. It's a good whodunit. The kill count is high. The kills themselves are wicked yeah. and memorable. The acting on everyone's part is really good. What's going to happen in the next one? Mm -hmm. There's got to be a next one now. And it makes you want to see the next one. Exactly. So they really, they actually did set it up perfectly. It's yeah. just that it sadly didn't go that way. Yeah. So if you've watched Friday the 13th Part 5 in the past, it kind of like, ah, it's not Jason. It kind of uh, no. doesn't count. We beg you to revisit it. It look deserves it. it. Yeah, look at it in a different light and enjoy it for what it is. Exactly. And until next time, keep drinking.